G'day, Native Bee Nick from Australian Native Bee. Today I'd like to run through a few of the questions that people ask about solitary bee hotels and building them. Now in Australia we have over 1,600 uh, solitary bees, some people say over 2,000. Um, and it's a really important thing to keep in mind that there are other pollinators apart from uh, social bees that live in all or one colony. Now the difference is solitary bees, they live by themselves, they collect uh, uh, largely pollen and they mix it with a bit of nectar and they store that in uh, basically their home which is a, usually a tube like thing, could be in the end of a branch, bamboo, something like that. Um, and uh, they work to provide just enough food for their young. Solitary bees are really effective pollinators and very important to our environment and with the degradation of land uh, or natural land that's been untouched by man it's becoming rarer and rarer so a lot of people believe that putting a solitary bee hotel in their yard is a great way to help the environment might be true might not be true um, you get a lot of parasitic uh, wasps and things coming to your solitary bee hotel once you've built it so there's a little bit of, you know, do we or don't we? Um, so today I'd like to just go through and uh, show you a solitary bee hotel. So this is one that I built uh, yesterday. And um, you can see here that the holes are quite big. Now I've drilled a 6, 8 and 10 mil uh, series of holes here. And I've countersunk them all into each other. Uh, just for a cool appearance on the face of it. Uh, six, eight and ten are really good for your resin bees, but remember we have hundreds of different solitary bees. Uh, so you don't have to stop there. This is a little solitary bee hotel, and yes, bees do come to it and nest in it. I saw a little bee trying to nest in my timber yard and it probably to the eye looked like a mosquito, but I knew it wasn't. And so I built a little bee hotel and to my surprise, he moved in and so did, uh, or she moved in and so did a lot of her friends. So um, that's my little solitary bee hotels to give you an idea how small you can go with your solitary bee hotels. Oh, there's one, most of these ones hatched out, which was unusual because um, they were in and out really quick. Uh, but you can see there's one left in there. I don't know whether you can see that, whether the camera will pick it up, but yeah. So there you go. Lots of different ranges of hole sizes will work. In terms of the construction of your hive, there's some key things. Obviously a bee doesn't want to live somewhere where you wouldn't want to live. So think about that when setting up your bee hotel. You've got a side of your house that gets hit with heavy sunlight and rain. Obviously you wouldn't want to live there and neither do bees. You need a uh, semi sort of uh, sunny location and anywhere from sort of three foot to five foot high is a good place to mount your solitary bee hotel. I build mine out of um, timbers that are that last a long time outdoors. So teaks and uh, uh, western red cedar, they're gonna last and give uh, you a long, a long life in your uh, bee hotel. Some people who breed solitary bees place a really high importance on cleaning out each uh, uh, of the bee hotels every season to prevent disease and stuff. I don't clean out my solitary bee hotels. I let the one bees hatch out and the new bees jump in and it just happens like that every season. I particularly get a lot of resin bees and leaf cutter bees and just before Christmas this combination of bees gives you um, little uh, door closures that the bees put in place after they laid their eggs usually a combination of red and green so it's very fitting for just before christmas time you talk about is the depth of your holes now as a general rule the larger the hole the deeper it needs to go up to about 150 mil um, or six inches um, 
I build mine 125 mil deep. I find that to be a good depth for the size, the six, eight and 10 mil holes that I drill. So that's something to keep in mind. You see these uh, solitary bee hotels and they're made from little tiny blocks, you know, only 50 mil long. That's not really suitable, although you might get a bee living in it. It's, it doesn't provide a good uh, nesting site. So quite deep holes, build your solitary bee hotels quite deep. So a lot of people ask, I've gone and I've bought a solitary bee hotel. I've finished making mine and I've had it sitting in my yard for two years and I've seen nothing. Not a bee or a skerrick of a bee actually going to my solitary bee hotel. And I'd like to share with you uh, what I do. So I use uh, refined stingless beeswax from my stingless bees. Um, it uh, goes through a solar wax melter and it pulls all the smells from the plant material out of the propolis and extracts mainly just stingless beeswax with those propolis smells. And this is super, super attractive to resin bees. So the resin bees come along to work that wax and use it in their building for their homes. And when they land on the solitary bee hotel, some of them think, hey, there's some holes here. Why don't I start building here? With those resin bees going in, the solitary bee hotel begins to smell a little bit like the pheromones of the bees and other bees, leaf cutters and the like, will recognize that as a nesting area and before long you'll get a lot of bees coming to that area and after that you don't need to do anything. Assuming you don't move your solitary bee hotel around your yard, you will get uh, bees coming to it uh, season after season. Um, so yeah, I'll take you and I'll uh, do a little video of me melting some wax on the solitary bee hotel and you can tell me what you think.